Welcome to the Red Light Report, your number one source for all things red light therapy, where you will learn how to optimize your health, wellness, and longevity with the power of photobiomodulation. I'm your host, Dr. Mike Belkowski. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Red Light Report. I have a hunch today we're going to have a very fascinating conversation with Gail Lynn, and she is a renowned visionary inventor and pioneer in the realm of frequency healing and she's celebrated for her groundbreaking creation the harmonic egg which i'm sure we'll get into plenty today she went on to also create the harmonic egg ellipse and the lift so we'll get into all of that i'm sure these innovative sound and light frequency chambers designed with the aim of fostering holistic healing and wellness stands as a testament to Gail's visionary approach to promoting mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual well-being. She is also the author of Unlocking the Ancient Secrets uh excuse me, the Unlocking the Ancient Secrets to Healing, Why Science is Looking to the Past for the Future of Medicine. And I did take a sneak peek at that. I just checked it out on Amazon. And Gail, that came out a handful of months ago in July. So I'm sure we'll talk about that book as well a little bit. Uh, but without further ado, Gail, thanks for taking the time to to hop on the Red Light Report and, and and just talk about everything you know in the realm of light, sound, energy, spiritual healing, and beyond. Well, thanks for having me. I really like what you're doing. I like how you're taking a open minded approach and helping to educate people so they can navigate this future of medicine. Absolutely, my pleasure. And it takes um, I guess, like minded people like yourself who. Who are, who are knowledgeable in other areas that that I am not. So that's what it's all about is collaborating and just educating those that are willing to to listen in. And if it resonates with you, great. If it doesn't, you know, at least you heard or at least listened to the information and you're aware of it. But before we get into these interesting, innovative products that we were describing, the, the harmonic egg, the ellipse, and the lift, give us a little bit of background about yourself and how you've gotten into this very exciting and interesting alternative holistic wellness space and how you've developed this this amazing suite of products well it's your typical healer's story healer's journey right and i don't call myself a healer but they call the healer's journey where you're the wounded healer you heal yourself and then everything kind of flourishes from that and so i was born and raised in as we were talking before the show in the detroit area where your father was born and raised and so automotive was kind of the thing And so I became an engineer, uh, robotics, electronics. I was working in an an automotive supplier called United Technologies. I worked in drafting. I worked in CAD. I worked with switches and wires and I worked in calibrating equipment. And, you know, so that background came into use when I started doing this, even though I was told by many, many people building this type of a large wooden egg with the sacred geometry, with all the different planes on the X, Y, Z axis could not be done. So, but I'm one of those rebels. If you tell me I can't do it, get out of my way. (laughs) So, so after leaving Michigan, thinking there's got to be more to life than Henry Ford in the automotive industry, I was in Texas for a while. And that brought me into international business and traveling around the world and experiencing different cultures and shamanism and different cultures and how they heal. So then, you know, comically, I look at the universe and think how funny this was, how I was positioned in all these places. Then that takes me next to Hollywood. So learning extemporaneous communication, being in front of a camera. And now that I look back, I laugh so hard how this all came together. And I thought, you know, my some of my background is, you know, raised Catholic, molested by the priest. Don't feel sorry for me. It's a story, but it's not my story. But walking away from, you know, the priest when you're 14, you think that's God. So walking away from God when I was 14 and then coming together and dating an evangelist. I mean, it doesn't get any funnier than this, right? Right. So dating an evangelist who happens to have been one of the Memphis Mafia with Elvis Presley. And then making a movie with him about his life with Elvis. I mean, my my life is stranger than fiction. <laughs> it's great. But you look at on that whole thing, and I thought my my God-given gift was project management operations. So I ran, you know, so many different companies in telecommunications, consulting, 
in Hollywood. And so when this presented itself to me as an opportunity to run a business in wellness, I was like, no, 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 no. And the universe said, yes, 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 I lost. You know, that's how the story goes. And, you know, now that I look back, the harmonic egg has affected tens of thousands of lives. And I couldn't ask for a better life myself to be able to facilitate because I don't really see myself as the inventor. It feels like it was more of a download or a dream, like an Einstein or a Thomas Edison would say that you just it just came to me in a vision. And I was able to build it with some help from some light engineers, some sound engineers. And then I started diving into why does this work? Why does light therapy work? Why does sound therapy work? If we're vibrational beings of light from source energy, why not heal with sound and light? And so unlocking the ancient secrets to healing and how science is looking at the past for the future of medicine was what I wrote about. And you've had guests on your shows talking about this is ancient stuff. This isn't new. We're we're talking about Egyptians and the Greeks and the Chinese and Eastern medicine, acupuncture with the chakras and the different light therapies. It's so brilliant. Yet it seems to have been suppressed. And now here it is coming to the forefront as medicine. Once again, I don't want to backtrack too much, but I mean, there's so much to cover there. I appreciate you sharing your story with us. What was the timeline? Like when did this vision come to you? When was the, when was the uh, product, I guess, conceptualized and move forward? And to throw another question at you, why were you initially resistant to taking the reins of a health and wellness company? What, what was that resistance about? Well, to answer the, the first question very quickly, 2016 is when it started coming through. There's a whole backstory to that. But 2016, it started coming through. 2017, I had the first one, did a lot of testing with doctors, acupuncturists, just a different, a bunch of different types of people to see what the protocol should be. The resistance, I think, was, and this is going to be funny. No one's ever asked me this before, but I did not like feet. I don't like people's feet. And I thought, I might have to touch people's feet. This oh is God. a really true story. I No one asked me this before. It's funny. And I thought, I might have to help people take their shoes off and put their shoes back on. And, and <laughs> that was part of it. And I think an underlying the responsibility that was taken on to support people's health. And I wasn't sure that I was big enough to take that on. But feet. <laughs> feet. So you, so you weren't into reflexology. No, I like reflexology. I just don't want to do You're not touching people to yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's fascinating. Okay, so let's let's jump into I guess a little more of, of the engineering or how it works, the mechanism of the egg and if if you look at it, ladies and gentlemen, go to go to the website harmonicegg.com so it fits the bill. It looks very futuristic, it looks very interesting. Of course, you have a couple of different types i think so the harmonic egg itself is 11 feet by 11 feet by 7 feet to give people an idea of 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 the size of this thing but if you would gail just go into again the mechanisms what it is meant to do uh and just give us a little more details in in that sense well edgar casey the sleeping prophet if you know your audience may or may not know who he is he said in the 1940s you know somebody can bring together the spiritual forces and a paraphrase of sound and the spiritual forces of light it would be a great modality for the future and there have been modalities that have come out that use sound and light and because i felt like we're vibrational beings of light from source we should use sound and light together some people use light separately some people use sound separately And that's what we're trying to educate people. Find the thing that works for you. There is no one size fits all. What I wanted to do and my intention was reduce or minimize EMF. EMFs are everywhere. So I wanted to reduce that. So I wanted to make it out of wood and acting such maybe as a Faraday cage, like nature, like forest bathing. So and the inside is wood. I wanted to not use any Bluetooth technology, Wi-Fi technology. I didn't want a lot of electronics because I also wanted to serve the autistic population, which are very sensitive. Um, So the kids on the spectrum, I feel like at some level, I'm on the spectrum. You know, I'm sensitive. I go into a grocery store. I'm overstimulated by the fluorescent lights, the people talking, 
just the, the motors running of the freezer machines. There's so much stimulation. So I wanted to give people something that they could be healing by themselves, just with themselves, not as a group of people who are maybe releasing other things. It's your own individual healing inside of natural material wood. It's not giving off a lot of EMS. But I have a 180 page training manual for people who, you know, run this as a commercial business to teach them, you know, what does red light do? What does blue light do? What does green light do? And I feel like we need the full color spectrum, just like we get from the sunlight for our proper healing for balance, just like we wouldn't just eat red meat, we would eat vegetables and we would have some, you know, different types of food. So we have balance. So what I wanted to do is bring that the spiritual forces together in one modality for a very relaxing, nervous system balancing modality. And when you balance the autonomic nervous system, everything can really heal. And so bringing all that together, I did on purpose, did not use any infrared. I love infrared, near infrared, but I thought it'd be too much. I didn't use any, any aromatherapy. So for my specific modality, that would have been overstimulating and over detoxing because it already detoxes the body with the vibrations of the sound and the frequencies. So I love to learn about other modalities and how they can complement each other without the surgeries, without the pills, without all the side effects. So that's kind of where I was basing it. And so... Can you speak a little more towards the geometry? I think you initially were speaking about that, the sacred geometry. And I've heard that, forget the name of the book, maybe was it Light is Medicine, where they talk about this blue room. I think it's up in Seattle, Washington. Do you know who or what I'm speaking of? Yes, yes. And it was based on, you know, uh, that room had its sacred geometry. It was using blue light and it was, again, set up. It sounds very similar to what you're talking about, but completely different as far as setting the person up for healing. So. Yeah. If you wouldn't mind just speaking more toward the sacred, geom sac sacred geometry and perhaps also how you were choosing frequencies as far as uh -huh. helping out the autonom autonomic nervous system. Yes. So I looked at a lot of sacred geometry and then kind of keeping in mind the Tesla mathematics when he talks about three sixes and nines and then the dodecagon and the 12-sided, and you look at the number 12. So 12 is, you know, two plus one is three. Uh, I looked at the hexagon shape and how the beehives use the hexagon shape. There's a lot of power in the hexagon shape. So that's the platform that the chair sits on. And then I looked at 360 of healing. So some of these modalities are in the shape of boxes, like a rectangular box. And I feel like you just don't get that sound immersion when you're in a box because you have the angles and, you know, it's hitting different spots. So, and then with the natural wood, I wanted the acoustics to just be the most beautiful thing in the world. I started looking at 528 hertz and the Solfaggio suite, and I started looking at things similar to that. But then I started to really tune into what if instruments what if the waveforms of instruments could affect the systems and the organs and the, the physical and emotional ailments of the body? So I started researching Kay Gardner's work and her book's called Sounding the Inner Landscape, and I believe it's out of print, but it was super influential for me to understand the waveform of the flute and how it affects different organs of the body. Inside the harmonic egg, the flute seems to affect the liver with orange light. So people will always tell me they'll, they'll, they'll hold their right side. Gosh, I really felt that it's like the road flute and orange light. So after 20,000 or so clients hearing this feedback, I thought, okay, there's something here in drumming. We did live blood analysis and found that white, the white blood cells were more prevalent, more white blood cells after listening to drumming music. And then we did heart rate variability. And after piano music, it seems like the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system were really coming into balance. 100% of the time, there was always an improvement in the autonomic nervous system after a session. I'm not going to put out a medical study. I'm not a medical doctor. And I don't believe that the even if I had 200, which I did, heart rate variability tests, they didn't have a controlled study because it was any age range from 16-year-old to 90-year-old, old, male, female, different cultures, different backgrounds, different diets, different exercise, different intentions. 
And so I don't feel like it's a, it's a controlled study like science. Uh, and I've had some discussions with some doctors about what is a controlled study. I'm kind of, since I'm an engineer and I have a certain perfection to me, a controlled study to me would be you lived in the same house, had the same parents, ate the same foods, had the same job, the same boss, the same siblings, the same you know, regimen every day, which would be impossible to find to do a study. Yeah, 100%. And you could argue that for a lot of these controlled studies, right? It's like, how do you have a control of the person that's actually being tested? It's, I mean, again, like to your point, you could probably set it up some way, but it just wouldn't really proper, properly uh, encapsulate the power or, or the potential healing powers of whatever's being tested. It's a kind of a stiff in that sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's interesting. So just to backtrack a little bit again, when you were starting this harmonic egg, I got to imagine when 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 this vision, so to speak, came to you, were you a, a heavy meditator at that point and or are you right now? Like, is that definitely part of your health and wellness regimen? I love meditation, but I need guided meditations. My brain never shuts off. So sitting in silence for me is hard. And that's why I incorporated 10 minutes of silence at the end of a harmonic egg session. It makes you sit in silence. It starts to train your brain into silence. And when we don't have silence all the time, we have dings and bings and gongs and in radio and TV and, you know, the telephone, we're so out of conditioning for sitting in silence. So I'm now training myself. 10 minutes is easy now because I sit in the 10 minutes of silence at the end in a great before I jump out and go into traffic or start talking to somebody or get on an electronic device or go back to work. So I really, really like meditation, but it's really hard for me. So meditation was not my strong point. Guided meditations were good. I do yoga. I spend time in nature. I've I've played sports when I was younger and I have a horse. So I do go outside. I work from home. So I go outside six, seven, eight times a day. I'm in the sunlight. I'm in Colorado, so it's sunny 300 and some days out of the year, which is great. And so I do grounding, but it's in the silence that I think we get these really profound messages. And that's where I get them. You know, when you wake up and you're in that hypnagogic kind of state when you're just waking up and just floods of information is coming in because you haven't gotten busy with your electronic devices and all this tasks for the day and what your spouse is doing and your kids and what your bank account looks like. You're in that space that is just, it's all the information from the universe is there. You could just grab it. And I feel like this was just something in the universe. I've had people come in and say, this was my idea. i would had this idea like 10 years ago. Okay. What was in the universe? And I just happened to grab it. So, because I do think that it's just out there for somebody to take a hold of. Did you guys know that it's teeth whitening season? Well, heck, isn't it always teeth whitening season? Who doesn't want to have the widest, brightest smile in the room? And not just that, but also receive the benefits of red light therapy for the oral cavity at the same time. The Guardian Plus, which implements both blue light for the teeth whitening aspect, but also the red and near infrared light for the red light therapy aspect for your oral cavity. We're all familiar with blue light for the teeth whitening aspect, but did you know the blue light therapy is also beneficial for selectively killing harmful bacteria, leaving the beneficial bacteria thriving and well. And blue light therapy is also good for gum health and tooth sensitivity. And of course, we know the laundry list of things that red light therapy does for the oral cavity, such as gum health and gum pain, infections and inflammation, wound healing, gingivitis, oral mucositis, so on and so forth. So with the Guardian Plus, you get the best of both worlds. Whiten your teeth and improve the health of your oral microbiome. And it's kind of interesting you bring up the the whole point about silence because I was actually going to ask you, like, the contraption, the harmonic egg is in a lot of ways similar to these sensory deprivation setups, except you're kind of doing the complete opposite. Instead of floating and having the silence, some of them do include sounds if you want sounds, but a lot of them are, the intention is to be sensory deprivation and so with your harmonic aid, you have have these, these uh, sacred geometry, you have these specific sounds and the specific wavelengths of light. So I was actually going to have you co- kind of compare, you know, what is the difference or, or 
I mean, it's just, just such such a juxtaposition of sensory deprivation, and there's plenty of benefits, especially for reducing stress and all those good things. And you you brought up a lot of good points about sitting in silence, and and the benefits of that. While on the other side, integrating specific frequencies of sound or light, and, and of course, those are all wavelengths or different types of light. I mean, can you even compare and contrast them? I mean, they have their own benefits, right? They absolutely do. So if somebody resonates with that, I don't resonate with um, soaking in water because I've studied Emoto's work and I just know how water can hold information and energy. And I look at, you know, the, the water. I'm very sensitive, as I stated already. So I could go in that water and feel the energy of maybe the last person. And that to me is a little bit, it's not, it's not for me. But I created an immersive experience without the energy of water, without the information being held. So we don't use crystals either because crystals can hold information and energy and they need to be cleared by, you know, healers that use crystals as a modality. So I think that the we have so much information now and so many modalities and so many choices. I think it's exciting. So if people love float tanks, awesome. If they benefit from them, awesome. It's just not for me. Gotcha. Okay. Well put. Also, in the initiation or the initial stages of the harmonic egg, how were you deciding again the sounds or the lights? Were you testing them on yourselves? Like, did you build this massive contraption and have like a? Or were you just testing it on yourself, testing it on friends and family, and then making iterations as as necessary? Or like, did you kind of have the whole thing mapped out in your mind? Like, this is what it's going to be, and you just knew it was inherently going to work. No, I had no idea. I, I thought it would be cool and I was going to build it for myself. And so I built one that looked like it was going to fall down on you. Literally, it was a prototype. It cost about $12,000 with the materials and tools and stuff. And I thought we had a little saw, is a saw horse that you like hold things up with. That's how the door was held up. It literally looked like it was going to fall down. But just that piece of, of art made out of pressed wood worked. I had a DO doctor, I had an acupuncturist, I had a plant therapist, and about seven other people that were coming in and they were saying, okay, mm, two days was a little bit too much. That was that that was a little intense. You know, an hour session was a little too much. Let's back that up a little bit and maybe have some silence at the end. So this group of people was kind of my study group. And the music, I thought, okay, we have to figure out the music. And we need consciously created musicians, people who have a high heart energy, because I wanted it to express so much love. And I wanted people to feel like they were hugged, like in a cocoon, and they were in, they could feel the love coming through. And so I found consciously created musicians that I said, when you're recording this piece of music, I need you to hold a space of, of love. There is no conditional or unconditional love. Love is love. And I said, not for maybe your ex-husband or ex-wife or ex-partner, but it's like a space, uh, a, a place, a, a piece of land or an animal. Because, you know, animals, we just love them so much. So holding that space of love. I have a lot of doctors I work with and scientists. And they say, you know, music therapy therapy is music therapy. But if you have a musician that, and I believe this, if they're angry, you could pick up that anger, you could pick up that energy, everything is energy. And so I wanted to make sure that the music was just expressing love. And now we have one piece of music called Frequency of Love with whale sounds. And I always put in a nature sound because I feel like our DNA heals with nature. That's why we always say go out in nature to heal. And some people that I put that piece of, they said, I didn't like that. And I thought, how can you not like that? It's the most beautiful piece of music I've ever heard in my entire life. But then I realized they didn't love themselves. So how can they be immersed in this frequency of love and they don't love themselves? So they tend to, to resist it. So I'm learning a lot about people. I'm learning a lot about how to help people navigate their own healing journey. It's not a it's not an event, it's a process. So they're like, you know, one and done. You don't just go into the egg one time. You don't just use red light therapy one time and you're done. You you have to continually use this and help yourself get healthy and live a quality of life. I, I plan on living well over a hundred and still being that crazy old woman, that little kids, 
that girls are like, did you still hear that old lady, what she said? I love it. That's <laughs> that's the goal, right? 100 and still vibrant. That's the goal. So you spoke about some profound results with flute sounds and orange light and having an effect on the liver. What other things or what other combinations have you noticed that people respond to? Uh, and then secondarily, you, you kind of alluded to this a little bit with your last answer, but what does a typical session in the harmonic egg look like? Is this something you do daily? Is it something you want to do maybe every other day? What does that look like? So let's see what question do I want to answer first? I think what I wrote about in my book is, it's you know, if you're going to use there's instruments and there's colors that will bring every chakra back into balance. So if you have an imbalance in your third eye chakra, you could have a brain tumor. Bringing that back into balance with, you know, the indigo light and different instruments is going to really help you. Uh, root chakra is more drumming and red light. So survival stuff. So it's going to really help with increasing circulation, stimulation and stuff like that. So I really think that everybody is going to heal with a different combination, but we have a lot of combinations that they can use when they do the harmonic egg. So when you come into a location that has a harmonic egg and we're at 130 locations in 10 countries now, it's so crazy. Wow. You're you're greeted by a practitioner who's going to help you set an intention for your session because I listened to, you know, Jonathan Goldman and Wayne Dyer. And these are some of my gurus that I've listened to for 25, 30 years. I'm 53 now. And the power of intention, you know, frequency plus intention equals healing. So these guys have said this. And so we help them set their intention. And so sometimes they come in and they just want to feel better. So let's say it's a Parkinson's and they just want to get rid of their tremors. And often Parkinson's is heavy metals, neurological in the brain. We've seen it with people with, you know, metal in their bodies. And then over time, that off gas happens and then it builds up and they, the glass fills and tips over. And then all of a sudden they have the tremors or they're shuffling their feet. And so I always say, do you remember what it, would feel, what it felt like when you didn't have the Parkinson's, when you were so healthy and vibrant and you could run and you could do all the things that you wanted to do? And I try to take them back into the cell memory with that intention. And then we use a lot of drumming and green and yellow lights with Parkinson's. Seems like a good combination that works really well inside the harmonic egg. And they will come out and take a heel to toe step, or they will come out and they'll say, look, gal, I'm not trembling. And I'll smell metals in the room. So I know that it's, it's detoxing the body as well. When you bring the nervous system into balance, the body can innately detox on its own. So I'm not saying that the egg is detoxing you. The environment that the egg puts your body into is helping your body to detox. Gotcha. So exactly. It's facilitating putting your body in a position to heal, to detox, to put it in a state to thrive. And so you didn't say this directly, but is it like if I were to walk into a location that has a harmonic egg, they're more or less going to assess me as a person mentally, physically, spiritually. And with that assess my chakras or is the chakras not necessarily part of it but again based on whatever assessment is made that'll help determine what frequencies light sound otherwise are utilized in, in the egg when i'm in there correct so it's going to be on an individual basis it's not really based on the chakras or the out of balance chakras although we have done bio well studies and gdv camera and you know different aura readings but it's what you tell us if for some reason you're holding on to a lot of grief, we're going to work with the lungs. We're going to work to release that grief from the lungs. If it's anger, it's going to be the liver. If it's fear, it's going to be the kidneys. So we look at these different aspects of what your intention is. If you have a condition, we know Epstein-Barr virus, you know, we have boost immunity kind of song selections, but we can't treat or diagnose. We can listen to what you're saying and we can support increasing circulation, decreasing uh, blood pressure. And there's different song selections. So red light will increase blood pressure in a lot of cases, but blue will bring it down. So the, the training manual is pretty extensive just to help and assist the intentions of all the different types of people that come in. Sure. With so many, of, as you said, was it 130 or 180 that are in, in locations across the world? So last count was 130 locations. We've sold 174 eggs. I just know this because I counted them yesterday. Somebody asked me. <laughs> and so, but some locations have two. Some people just have them in their home. 
Sure. And have a home unit as well because some people can't fit an 11 foot by 11 foot by seven foot egg in their home. So my question was, okay, so of course you can buy this for your home. If you wanted to check out to see what location may be closest to you, is there some way to go somewhere to find this out? Harmonicgang.com, go to the locations, put in your zip or your country. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. And then, so yeah, there's the harmonic egg, then there's the ellipse, which is a smaller version. Is that more so targeted towards people who want them in their house or just need a smaller version, so to speak, for their their, uh, business location? So the harmonic egg was our flagship product at the harmonic egg ellipse is our harmonic egg 2.0. Okay, got you. What we've been able to do is redesign the door. We found that handicapped people went in wheelchairs had a hard time getting up on top of that platform. You can see on the website, there's a door that has a platform that rolls out. So we made it more like closet doors so they could roll right up to the edge of the chair. We can even remove that step. That's There's a step in front. And so we also made it so it's more um, self-assembly. The Harmonic Egg 1.0 was harder to assemble and disassemble because you kind of had to paint it and kind of speckle it together a little bit for it to have the smoothness. So now we have the raw wood with the ellipse. So it's easier to assemble and disassemble, more handicap accessible. It takes up a little bit of a smaller footprint in a room. So that's really important in New York with the rent prices per square foot. Absolutely. So we're try, trying to make it, um, we're listening to our marketplace and making the changes. The lift, which is my let it float therapy, is the home unit. That's just a, a round capsule, a round light capsule that's made out of oak inside. So what what is the lift? Could you just, I was actually going to ask you that. It's um, more of like a cylinder upward uh, facing product. Yeah, it's 48 inches in diameter. So I still use the divisible dimensions by three. So 48 inches in diameter, and it has one light and one speaker. Same music, but you can use it at home. And you had asked, too, about how often can you use it. I just recalled that question. So with the harmonic egg and the harmonic egg ellipse, you want to let that integrate for at least five to seven days. So just like eating a meal, you got to let things digest. you got to let energy work digest. You don't want to do too much. You don't want to put yourself into a healing crisis. You don't want to hurt yourself. So I tell people for the harmonic egg and the harmonic egg ellipse, you wait five to seven days. Where the capsule, the light capsule for your home, you could use it every day for 15 minutes a day, or you could do sessions every couple of days. It's just not as intense because of the cubic airspace that the harmonic egg is. Interesting. Gosh, this is all fascinating. Where to go next? I mean, we can talk a little bit about red light therapy, but I know what you're especially focused on with with the egg, and I'm sure in your lifestyle, is more so full spectrum visible light. So we can get into those other color, colors actually in a little bit. Uh, but do you personally at all use red light therapy for any reason? Or again, is it more so using whichever spectra wavelengths are going to be most nourishing based on you know your health status or your mood status you know in the moment? Yeah. So I use red light therapy when I want you know, physical healing from like a cut or maybe a broken something. I want to increase the circulation. I want to get some red light going on there. I don't use red light for kids on the spectrum or pets because I feel like it's a stimulating color, which it is. And so a lot of times my clients can't handle red light because it's so stimulating. So they need to be calmed down, especially when they're stuck in fight or flight and the nervous system is so jacked up. So I love red light therapy. I mean, every athlete should have access to red light therapy for injuries. Love it. Love it. Yeah, it's awesome. So I think it depends on what you're looking for. Totally. Can you educate the audience? Because of course, with what I'm doing, especially on this podcast, but with my business is like very centered around red and near infrared light. Uh, You kind of alluded to orange light. What can you give us a little more information on let's say yellow or green or blue indigo and some potential benefits of those wavelengths? Yeah, for sure. So orange light is, I feel like it's the color of success and confidence. And it's in your sacral chakra. So you got that womb energy, especially for women. Um, Yellow light is your, it's personal power, self-esteem. It's that energy center that's in the solar plexus chakra, right in the middle of your chest. Green light, if you look at green, look at nature how beautiful nature is and all the green in nature. It's a neutral color. It's abundance. It's 
It's just helping with joy and calming, cooling colors. So when we get to the greens, the blues, and the purples, it's the calming, cooling, relaxing colors. So blue light, you know, think about the throat chakra. So having your voice and, you know, a lot of people don't have a voice with their spouse or with their boss. And so they get that really, you know, thyroid cancer or they'll get something going on with, with the thyroid because they don't have a voice. And then you move up to the third eye chakra, which is the indigo color, like a purple and blue, purpley blue color. And I help people with an out of balance third eye chakra with migraines, headaches, um, not all migraines because migraines can be a lot, but brain tumors I mentioned earlier. And then we talk about the crown chakra, which is the purple and different ailments that come in with that, but a lot of emotional stuff too, and tuning into your, to your higher power, your higher self. So yeah, all the colors of the rainbow. So I encourage people to eat the colors of the rainbow, to wear the colors of the rainbow. I think we we have to have that balance. My boyfriend in particular wears black all the time. It's no color. His skin is so wrinkly and so like leathery. This, his body's not absorbing color. He's always wearing black. And it's also can cause people to have more depression. You got to get some colors in there. My my wardrobe's all different colors. It's in a rainbow you know, short sleeves, rainbow, long sleeves, rainbow. And so I really encourage people to do that. There's a book called, um, it's Linda Clark's, it's on my shelf, if I could see it from here, but it's about color therapy. It's written in 1975. And in the art of color, something Linda Clark. And she talks about the potential of replenishing your minerals and your vitamins with color. And that the reds and and the oranges can replenish your B vitamins. And so what if, what if we didn't have to take supplements? What if we could use red light and blue lights and green lights and replenish our minerals and our vitamins and, and not have to process some of that stuff through our kidneys and our liver? Because a lot of people take a lot of things and really it's, it's, it's toxic instead of helpful. That's highly fascinating, isn't it? A lot of these issues, and you've alluded to this, is basically just like when I talk about red light therapy, it's a deficiency of red and near infrared light, which typically comes from a lack of sunlight, which we can just call malillumination. And so, to your point, um, a lot of these issues, whether it's we want to call it a deficiency in yellow or orange or indigo light, what have you, is is a lot of it's just a, a lack of being out in the sunlight in this modern world we're living indoors and, and we're not getting outside and so all of that to say i kind of pose this question to you when is it quote unquote enough to restore health with the sunlight and when is it necessary to have this more uh, i don't want to say condensed maybe a higher concentrated form of the green light or the yellow light or the orange light that's a great question never been asked that one before I will definitely not be sitting out in the sunlight when it's 20 degrees outside. So right there with you. <laughs> I'm going to do some light therapy. When I grew up in Michigan, as you know. And so um, six months out of the year, it's cloudy. I ended up going to tanning booths because, you know, I was like, I needed that. You had that seasonal affective disorder. So I don't know if there's an answer for everybody or every body. For me, I love to get out in the sun every day. And I believe that I have a little thing called the Vita stick. It's a little meridian tester. It's it's 70% clinically accurate. So I just had to get a baseline for my body. But when I'm not out in the sun, I can tell the vitamin D is down. So I definitely think the sun is a critical thing for our bodies as humans on the planet Earth, for sure. And then there's another thing that I want to bring up too is you can be missing a tone from your voice. You can be missing a tone of E or a tone of G or F sharp, which can also cause the body to have maladies. So for example, the tone of E missing from the body can create lung issues, emphysema, um, asthma. And I'm still learning about this right now. And I'll talk talk a little bit about another podcast that I've listened to. So you can have a voice analysis and see what's missing from your voice. So replenishing that inside the harmonic egg or with some kind of sound therapy is also important. Um, I believe that yellow is associated with E, and so you can replenish that as well. So it's really interesting how colors and sounds and frequencies and instruments and tones really relate. 
But Terrence Howard has a podcast out there right now, and he's saying he's working on a device that's similar, sounds similar to the harmonic egg. So yay, all these things that we can do and put out there and normalize this in society, yay. We should all come together, though, and try to standardize some things, as you were talking about on a podcast with Sarah a couple of yep. months or two ago. But there's not a lot of medical instruments or scientific instruments that can test the energies that we're using. So it's, it's going to be really hard to do that because how do you really test what's even happening? But he says hydrogen is in the key of E and yellow. But then I have another lady that I study under named Ani Williams who says hydrogen's in the key of B and magenta. <laughs> so I think we're still navigating this. Like who's who's right? Or are they maybe it's E and magenta and yellow and B. We don't know. Right, right. Um, maybe it's a combination. So I would love to see these people come together with these brilliant minds and study this a little bit more, but how do you really test that? Highly fascinating. And that also like begs the question, how do these ancestral or these ancient civilizations have all of this wisdom that it seems like we can't figure out today, yet they knew it thousands of years ago? It's pretty incredible. Do you think that it's because we're so, we have so much technology and we have so much information at our fingertips, we're confused? Less in, less less in touch with more? nature, right? Yeah, maybe less would be more. I feel like I can, I, when I do the harmonic egg and when I do sound and light therapies, I feel like I start peeling back layers of the onion and I get to find the me, the true me, the essence me. Because I spent a lot of years being like, oh, that girl's so pretty. I wish I was her. You know, I don't wish I was anybody else but me now because I've come into my own. And so, you know, I can start to talk to the trees and start to get information from the land. So maybe that's what they were doing because they weren't staring at their iPhone or their Android. They weren't flipping through Instagram and, and TikTok. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 10 like years ago, quite, quite honestly, let alone 100 or 200, 300 years ago. Yeah. yeah, no, I think there, without a doubt, like how many people could truly just go outside in the morning and accurately predict what the weather was going to be for that day or the next couple of days. Uh, whereas like the Native Americans and, and probably civilizations before them, they could do that on a whim, right? It was just part of their, it was second nature to them. And so then you extrapolate that to like health remedies, you know, tapping into mother nature and earth. And yeah, I think there's a lot to be said for how out of touch we are, given that all the technology we do have. So it's kind of ironic, is it not? That exactly uh, that we can't I, even I measure. My smartphone's people. making me stupid. That's what right. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, but no, I love I love how nature. My friend is his name is Bayou Bob. He owns a rattlesnake ranch in Texas, and he said this is how you eat off the land. You know, you you test something. You make sure that there's a lot of it on the land. You can look at the scat or the poop from the animals because if they ate it, you probably can't eat it as well. But he said you you know you just push it, put it up against your lip, and then see if your lip swells up. If it doesn't in four hours. Then you put a little bit of it in your mouth and you chew it up and you spit it out. If your tongue doesn't swell up and you know you seem fine after four hours, then you take a bite of it and you eat a little bit of it, you swallow it. If no, you know, no belly ache or no reaction, you can probably eat it. So I mean that takes four, eight, twelve, you know, sixteen hours or whatever, but there's so many things that we've lost touch with. And I don't think pe people will be like, oh, it's great information to know. But we don't think about that because we could just go in the refrigerator or go drive through the McDonald's or whatever. And it's right there for us. We don't think about living off the land anymore. And so we're not in touch with the land anymore. Yep. 100%. Yeah. I mean, that's a fascinating conversation. I mean, we could have a whole episode on that alone. But Gail, what other things, let's say Eastern medicine holistically or what, what have you that we haven't touched on, are you really interested, excited about, utilized, learning about that you could share with the audience? Yeah, I really want to find out more about um, the nutrients that are in our foods. And so there was there's a bio-nutrient meter I thought Dan Kittredge was going to come out with, but now he's not selling it anymore, where you can go to the grocery store and you can scan the fruits and, you know, organic, inorganic, and see what the minerals content is. And I'm reading a fascinating book, What's Your Food Ate?, so basically saying, okay, like what your food ate is what's going to be in the food. So really interesting about the soils. So I would really like to see some more research. Uh, I don't have time to do it because of the studies I'm doing on, you know, the nutrients of the food and, and what, what 
effects does it have from sitting under fluorescent lights? What if we could just go into the grocery store and it was dark? It wasn't sitting under fluorescent lights and losing its properties. I wouldn't mind that at all. There's there's so many things that I think we should know about replenishing our vitamins and minerals and what's in our food and how our food's being processed. And so that's really just a fascinating topic for me because I really do think and I do believe I'll be living over 100 years old. I try to watch my diet. Of course, it's hard. It's hard with all the temptations of refined sugar and fast food. And the cleaner that you are, the more light therapy that you do and clean up your body with, you know, the different light frequencies, I think your body starts to reject these fast foods. I can't eat them anymore. They just make me sick. Same here. And I thought, oh my gosh, this was good a long time ago. A couple years ago, it was pretty good. More like a decade ago plus. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So like 10 years ago, I love that stuff and I can't even eat. I can't put it in my body anymore. Now, does that mean that? Um, you know, I love myself more, so I don't want to put the junk into my body or my boyfriend says you're too clean. I'm like, well, can you be too clean in this dirty world? Possibly. But is it a bad thing that your body is rejecting the junk that is going to probably ultimately create inflammation and give you a disease? I think it's fascinating. So I have a mind, some like yours, you know, where I'm always thinking like, if then that, if that, then, and you know, putting all the pieces of puzzle together. I I love it. I just am such a nerd. Yeah, it's it's a never ending adventure, I suppose, you know, and that that that's part of the fun to a to a certain degree. Just always being on the the front edge and learning learning, which can can be overwhelming, I guess. Once you just become a lifetime learner, it's just kind of part of your second nature. And so I'm kind of curious, where do you stand, Gail, regarding supplements? And and other practices like fasting or intermittent fasting, is that something you integrate? I do intermittent fasting. So I will stop eating by seven o'clock and not eat again for 12 hours. I won't eat again until seven o'clock the next day. I do. I know you don't, you're not a breakfast person, but I love my breakfast. So, and I usually eat a bigger lunch and then a smaller dinner. That's how my body works. So everybody has to find the combination for themselves. So intermittent fasting, yes. Supplements, no, not so much. I I had been to many naturopathic doctors that put me on 16, 18 supplements and all it did was make me sicker. Um, and I know that's their training and that's what they study. So the medical doctors are taught to put you on a med and then, you know, say a chiropractor, is, that's what they're taught is to, you know, do physical cracking and adjustments. So we have to find the right combination that works for us. And supplements do not work for me. Even I could buy a $10 magnesium that might work, but the $200 one doesn't for my body. So I look at the vibration of them as well. And so sometimes I'll get my little pendulum out and I'll have to pendulum. What is the integrity of this company? Because for some reason it's a $200 supplement, but my body does not like it. And maybe the integrity of the company, the integrity of the manufacturing isn't there. So it's not vibrating at the integrity level that I exist in at that moment. And so sometimes you can feel the energy not there. So sometimes people say, oh, C60 is such a great supplement. From this company, yes. From this company, no. So it's it's so hard for the average person to navigate the shelves of Whole Foods or the shelves of some of these um, nutrition companies and really know. I, so I try to teach people to do muscle checking where they can put this next to their body and do a tilt test. And you first have to calibrate, make sure that your polarity is right, but you can put a supplement near your chest. And then if you tilt forward, it's a yes. If you tilt backward, it's a no. So I try to teach people how to listen to your own body because we're all so different. There isn't a one size fits all. So I do take magnesium and I do take electrolytes. I love superior electrolytes because they're plant-based and I know the CEO. I know his integrity. I know how much he loves to make this product and how much love goes into the product. And you can feel it at the angstroms on the pendulum. It vibrates at a higher than human body, you know, higher than a healthy human body. And those are the things that that I want to take is things that vibrate at higher than a healthy human body. So sometimes I'll have to take one zinc, you know, uh, if I start to feel a cold coming on, but then I might not take zinc again for another six months. So it's, you know, I love playing with supplements. I love listening to my body. I love when I hear people say that one just didn't resonate with me. I just, I love how that language is changing now with people. 
that's an extremely fascinating answer. I appreciate it, Gail. Um, and you're the second person that's brought up the using of a pendulum to make decisions. Would you mind extrapolating on that a little bit for the audience and for myself? How does that work? So let's say you want to test a supplement and to your point, it can be either A, is this good for my body? B, what's the integrity of this company and the ingredients they use? So how do you go about using a pendulum to make decisions like that? Well, much like muscle testing, you have to be very careful and don't use it to make emotional decisions like, should I stay with this person or not? Because you're probably going to get a bad answer. But you want to use, a, in, in the training that I've had, which is the radiesthesia, which is the Egyptian style of pendulum, where they were actually so in tune with their pendulum, they buried their person with their pendulum. That's how much of an influence the pendulum was and how much it was part of them. And they were usually made out of limestone. I tell people, unless you're really good at clearing crystals, you know, not to use a crystal pendulum, but people have brass ones and even oil. Oil people will use pendulums to find where the oil might be in the land or they use dowsing rods. So what I do with my pendulum, and it's a wood pendulum. Of course, I have an affinity to wood with the harmonic gang being wood. And I scan myself first. I scan my body and I ask the pendulum to make sure it it can get a get a reading on me. So I scan myself first. And I don't be I'm not spinning my pendulum around. I'm scanning myself, keeping my elbow at a 90 degree angle, keeping my feet flat on the floor. There's a really strict protocol on how to do it right. And then I scan the supplement. So then I get the energy of the supplement. And then I ask the question from the pendulum, is this right the right supplement for me? Now there's also other questions. Should I take this supplement with the capsule on? Is it going to is it going to dissolve at the right time? Is it going to survive the stomach acid and make it through to my colon if it's say probiotic, right? So you'll get different answers. I'm an O blood type, so I have a lot of stomach acid. So a lot of probiotics just they get killed right in my stomach acid, never make it to the colon. So I don't care if you have a million whatever, it none of it's going to make it to my colon to help me. So it's just a waste of energy. Some Supplements have capsules that have little particles of heavy metals in them. So I will sometimes be told by my pendulum, take the capsule, put it in water and drink it that way. So everybody has to really tune in and get the right answers. There is really not a yes or no answer. So you want to really dig into it. I had an employee of mine that used to water the plants by using the uh, tilt test, muscle testing. And a plant died. I said, you were asking this plant if it needed water and it kept telling you no. She said, yeah. I go, it died. I'm carrying it outside in this big container and I noticed the spider web in there. So the spider was telling her not to put any water in there. So you got to be careful who you're communicating with as well and when you're doing muscle checking or pendulum work. Fascinating topic, actually. Absolutely. I was just going to ask you, I know that's that's a very loaded question. Is there a resource for people interested in pursuing that or learning more about it that they could go to do so? Yeah, I would probably, I'd say, if I can remember how to spell it, radiesthesia, R-A-D-E-S-T-H-I-A. I think if they if they type in pendulum and those, those letters might be not spelled exactly right, I think they'll find a lot of resources. There's, you know, books and there's charts that you can purchase so you can you know use the pendulum with certain charts so you can say okay this is healthy human body on the angstroms and you can kind of use the pendulum to go through and find out what the frequency is of things by using the frequency charts i think it's just a, it's a fascinating study it's like almost like a college course it, it's not something that you just pick up and use it really takes a lot of practice it takes a lot of muscle memory And it takes a lot of trial and error to learn your pendulum, how your body communicates with it, and how you can communicate with your body. It's it's so fun. I just wish that more people would learn this so that they are asking their own body, what do I do? What do I take? Instead of running to a doctor and saying, what do I do? What do I take? Because we are our own best best doctors. This is is probably the most rhetorical of all questions, but like how... Uh, invaluable is your pendulum for you and just you as a being health wise or whatever, like how important would you put the pendulum on your hierarchy of, of tools that you use for your well-being? 
it's not high on the list because my intuition is spot on because I've done so many light therapy and sound therapy sessions that I'm more connected to my higher power and my source energy. But there are difficult things that sometimes I have to pick up the pendulum because I'm unsure of myself because I'm not as educated as I should be on it. So I pick up the pendulum and get some more tips. Well, I'm glad I asked. I didn't think that was going to be the answer, but that's uh, I appreciate your answer on that. And let's wrap up with this, Gail. You kind of alluded to this earlier about business and, and cooperation. You're you're a big uh, proponent of a business model of the future that can be about cooperation and abundance for all. Go a little more into that, if you will, share that with us, the kind of what you envision uh, business and future businesses models and how we can all, instead of being so, I guess, like you versus everyone else, right? Like such a capitalistic model, like instead of that, um, a mindset of abundance working together synergistically. So expound upon that if you would do so. So I created what I call the divine feminine business model. I don't really know what it's called. I just made that up because I felt like it's cooperation. And that we all should be supporting each other. So all of my egg guardians, we have a private Facebook page and we are all supporting each other on a private Facebook page. We have owner video calls every other Friday so we can get on and we can say, you know, I have this difficult client, which have you guys seen this before and how did you handle it? So we're all cooperating. We're referring clients to each other. Somebody in Vermont hears about somebody that has a family member in Massachusetts or in Texas, and they send them down there instead of the, oh, this is mine and I can't share it. But I feel like when we desire success for others, then success comes to us. And that's been my mindset. I was at a casino the other day and the guy next to me won $1,100 and he was so excited. And it's like, he was looking around and you can tell he's just bursting to tell somebody. And he was like, I just won $1,100. And I'm like, what? And I was genuinely happy for him, not jealous, not envious. You know, that little spark in me like, oh, he can do it. You know, maybe I'll win too, which I didn't, but it's fine. I was there to just play and have fun. But he he was so excited and I was so excited for him. And I love that, you know, we're all connected. We're all one. We're all in this together. No one's getting out alive, right? That's what my dad used to say. doesn't matter how much money you have. You're, you know, it's inevitable. You're going to die. And so why not be cooperative? Why not be supportive? Why not really manifest abundance for everybody? There's enough for everybody. I mean, who needs like, like I'll say this, but who needs $19 billion? I mean, I can't even fathom the number. Why can't we just, I don't want to say that people shouldn't work and then they should benefit from people that do work. Everybody should be, you know, equally out there supporting each other and supporting everything. But what can somebody do with $19 billion? They can help somebody do their dream. There's so many people out there that are scientists and engineers and they're so shy. And so I just give them money to help them do their dream. Or I'll finance an egg center because they maybe have bad credit and the banks, the banks don't support us like they used to. You know, if you have a good idea, they're like, no, you don't have good credit. Well, what the heck? What the heck is why? They're there to support us and to help us with our financial dreams. And so I feel like we can be so much more supportive of each other. We can be so much more cooperative and there's enough for everybody. And even some of these people who are healers and they just don't want to share their clients because they feel like they're going to then go in a place of lack. But living in that fear is a low vibration and they end up pushing people away anyway because of the low vibration. Yep. I love that message, Gail. Well said. Tough to... Like in a perfect world, that would that would extrapolate to, you know, all businesses. But even just like in the red light therapy space, it's like other businesses are like blocking me or, or the company. It's like because they don't want me to see what they're doing or, or it's a very weird energy when you're in a business and you're quote unquote competing or you're offering similar products. Like I think you know me, Gail, like I'm here to educate whether you choose BioLight or not. It's about getting the information out there so you do with it what you want to. Because uh, in the end, it's the information, the red and the near infrared light helping the mitochondria. Now we're getting into methylene blue and all the things that can do for your health. As long as you have that information, then you can go do with it what you will. 
whether or not you utilize my businesses or products or not. It's just about educating, informing. Because in this day and age, it's just like, it feels like we're fighting an uphill battle from, from a health perspective for, for many reasons. And so I don't know where I'm going with this. It's kind of like a soapbox rant. But yeah, to have this vibration like you're speaking about, empathy and compassion and kindness and helping. And I don't know, it just feels like it's too few people like you that I run into and get to uh, collaborate with. I don't know like how much you deal with social media and and people on there, but like trying to interact with quote unquote influencers, it's a very interesting game that is played what I've learned. I don't, again, I don't know if you use social media. Yeah, I do. So I don't know if, if you understand where I'm going with this, but all of that to say, I'm not even going to go down that, that rant. Well, if we could all just get along, anybody wants to hear anything about my patents or what I've done or how I, I share it. So I can relate this to the movie industry. So when I was in the movie industry, it's so much fluff. And I, I always tell people they would, some of those people would stab their own mother in the back for an opportunity in Hollywood. And so people would say, can you tell me how to make a movie? And I said, yeah, I'll lay it out for you. I will lay out every piece for you. And I will tell you exactly how to do it. And they're like, what? People in Hollywood don't share that information. I was like, okay, well, here's the thing. How long does it take the average person to make a movie? And the answer is the average person doesn't make a movie. So I must have shared this experience, like 15 pages of documentation. I did videos and everything for them. Not one of them did anything with it. And the same with the harmonic egg. If somebody could try to, you know, make another harmonic egg. It's not going to have the same energy and the same intention of what I've created in my business around an egg family of cooperation with the love and the integrity and the, the community and how we serve our, our, you know, our families. And you just can't recreate that energy. So I don't live in any kind of fear. That someone's going to steal anything from me. And that's where we need to get to is like, we need to be so confident in who we are and what we do that we don't fear someone's taking something from us. 100%. Well, Gail, we've covered a lot. Appreciate everything you share with us today. <laughs> I, what, we could, I feel like we could go on for hours with all the information, background, and expertise and anecdotes that you have. But if you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and share with the audience where people can go learn more about you and the Harmonic Egg and so forth. Yeah, it's really just HarmonicEgg.com. We have... Um, Let's see my book. We have a children's book that we created for basically the autism and the kids on the spectrum. But adults pick up that book and they're like, I don't know why I love this book. I just want to hold it. And then we have music pieces. So we have the web files that are downloadable and then we have it on USBs with song sheets. And it'll say this was recorded in the key of E for these reasons with these color intentions and these instruments. And here's the musician that did it. So a lot of people really love to listen those, to those at home. And then you can find all the locations. You can find everything on that website. It's, uh, but I just, I just enjoy educating people, trying to get people to think differently, and trying to let people know that I didn't come from some fancy background. I didn't go to some Ivy League college. Uh, I spent 13 years trying to get an education. I realized it was just kind of a game. I just needed to get the piece of paper and get out. Um, so I did. And anybody can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I'm not special, but you have to have focus and perseverance and stay in a place of love and gratitude, stay out of fear. And so, yeah, that's how people can find me. But I just hope that one person, at least if, if just one person said, you know what, I'm going to go do my dream, then this hour that we spent together was worth it. 100%. Yeah, we'll leave all the links for everything you just laid out, the the website, those those products, so forth in the show notes, so people can just click the link there. But hey, Gail, this has been amazing. I, I Just just looking at your website, your product and learning more about you before we started talking, I was very much looking forward to, the, to this conversation, because the type of person you are, and you've exceeded my expectations. And I'm, I'm hoping the audience uh, can feel the love um, from you as well. And I'm sure they did. So thanks for your time. Thanks for your information. And I'm sure our paths will cross again, I have no doubt. So for, for Gail Lynn, this is Dr. Mike Belkowski signing off another episode of the Red Light Report. Hope you guys enjoy this one, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Have a fantastic week. Thank you for listening to the Red Light Report. If you like what you heard today, go ahead and leave us a review on iTunes and other podcast platforms to help spread the word so other people can learn about the many health, wellness, and longevity benefits of red light therapy. 
If you're looking for more educational content, check out our Instagram page at biolite.shop and our YouTube channel, Biolite. I'm Dr. Mike Belkowski, and I'll see you on the next episode.